this is Glenn Gaylord with the Queer Review down here in Los Angeles. And nice uh, you, Glenn. you too, thank you. And I, I'm such a Letterkenny fan. So you do have fans with your neighbors to the South. No, I know. Thank you very much. <laughs> I wanted to get your take on this first to start out. Um, do you think that actors should be required to do coaches season nine, episode two hockey speech for all auditions from here on out? <laughs> yes. There's my answer. Yes, they or, should. Or, you or an auditioning for Juilliard should have to do that speech. Yes. Or Glenn's uh, gay panic speech is what I like to call, uh, where he's basically trying to not gossip while he's gossiping. A master it is, it is a panic. It is a panic. Well, as you can tell from my from the publication that I'm with, the Queer Review, um, my questions are going to be very queer focused today. Let's so, do it. Because um, I think that this is probably the most groundbreaking, groundbreaking progressive LGBTQ show on the air. And Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and I wanted to know: was that a conscious decision when you started the series? It wasn't. <clears throat> It wasn't a conscious decision when we started the series, but it definitely became a conscious thing as we moved along. Absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, I'm queer. Uh, and so I wanted to make sure that we were doing things that were interesting and representationally interesting. But then I also, what just kind of happened with the show is it became very, um, it became very pro-sex. It's, it's a show which allows people to live their sexual identities out loud and not be ashamed of them. And it allowed for all kinds of, uh, like a, a, I think I think of it as a very queer space in the broadest sense of the terms, where it's full of people who don't necessarily feel like they conform to uh, a, a normative sexual life, and they live in a place where nobody judges them for it. Yeah, I agree. And uh, so let's go back just to the very beginning for a second. When I first saw Wayne, I just got Tom of Finland vibes, and the way that his sexuality was approached, I thought okay, he's asexual, is he gay, where is this going? And I don't know that it's ever truly been confirmed because he still feels asexual. Well, he, he's, pretty, he's pretty straight. He's, he's straight, but he, he the, the vibes are still kind of dead inside sometimes, which I think feel intentional. Okay, uh, I mean, listen, Jared plays Wayne very flat, absolutely. So it's like, it's definitely, I would say that's kind of like his, that's his, that's his ode to like kind of, I mean, I've been saying this before, but like non-toxic masculinity. It's just, you know, he's like a very, uh, very centered, very underplayed guy. I can't help but try to do the face when I talk about it. <laughs> I don't think anyone can help but do that. So, <laughs> and let's talk about your character, Pastor Glenn, when you're introduced. Um, wow. I was getting- uh, Definitely not gay. Pastor Glenn, <laughs> definitely not gay. Well, I was getting vibes to your fellow Canadian Martin Short's Jiminy Glick or his character in the big picture with Kevin Bacon uh, as the agent. Any comparison to Martin Short, I'll take. Thank you. <laughs> and so what uh, what do you think is his sexuality, if you had to describe it? Uh, madness. Uh, I would say that Glenn, the way I decided to play Glenn is that he thinks he's Sharon Stone. So he thinks he's a femme fatale in a thriller and he treats everybody accordingly. And I think that's where the funny comes in is the, you know, kind of dressing up like a Bible salesman, but then behaving like you're behaving like you're, you know, in a noir and you, you know, you want to be Ava Gardner or whatever. Right. Um, I, I kind of want to go through some of the queer characters here. Sure. And so Katie, Michelle Milet's character, yeah. um, also has a, um, a fluid vibe to She's her. She's a flexible girl. She's very flexible. And with season nine, which I think she, um, has you know, we've seen we see her arc with her yeah. um, uh, her scorched earth plan, uh, and so I'm wondering with her because I call her the dominant top of the season. Yeah, she, for sure. She exudes very traditionally male energy, uh, and I'm curious if that was baked into your plan for season nine. It wasn't so much baked in. I mean, Katie from day one has been so sexually confident and so confident in all ways, truly. But like, she's so confident in her sexuality of, and of getting what she wants out of life. I think that feels masculine, but I think that because Michelle is so good that it actually, she owns it so well that there's a feminization to it uh, uh, also. 
Um, we don't really have plans. I'll just admit that right away. We kind of like things happen. And like, we go with what we like and we go with what works. And so we knew we wanted to do, we knew that she was going to break up with Derek. So we knew that we were going to send her out on dates and like have her do stuff. And then it was just like, well, yeah, of course, Katie's going to behave this way because she's Katie. That's what she does. Right. I mean, just the way you end episode two with her touching the guy's chest and you cut to black immediately. It's such a baller move. Yeah. And, I I, and it's something I that really, it stuck out with me in yeah. particular. Yeah, uh, so it's, it's hot. Yes, very. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Ron and Dax. So, yeah. you know, they came in a little late and, you know, not at the beginning of the, you know, in the beginning seasons. Um, what was the reason? You said you didn't have a plan, but something, some conversation happened oh, here. For sure. No, we just thought it'd be, we just thought it, I mean, frankly, we thought it'd be funny. We thought it was like, really, we wanted to explore the idea that there were gay people in sports, first of all, that there could be gay hockey players. And then we wanted, like, what is the ultimate challenge to Riley and Jonesy is like another pair of boys who are their mirror, their kind of like bizarro world equivalents but who managed to make them blush, you know, like that's the, that's the scale is like, how can you take your two kind of like dirty, you know, like the characters like talk about sex the most and then give them, like show them themselves in a, in a queer mirror, in a funhouse mirror. Um, and then what really ended up working though, is those two actors are so fucking good and they're so much fun to watch and they clearly enjoy doing this. It was just, we were all like, I remember the first day they were on set, Jared and I looked at each other and we were just like, this is gold. This is going to yeah. be great. They're killing it and they're short shorts. It's fantastic. I mean, just James's reaction when Gail comes back from her hookup um, in, and, and ju I'm just kept looking at what he does, even when he's not talking. And yeah, it's they're, they're, both, they're both phenomenal actors, phenomenal actors. Um, speaking of Gail, where would you put her and the McMurray's on the Kinsey scale? Gail is a mystery to me, as well she should be. I still don't pretend to understand. I'm thrilled she's with Jim Dickens. I love that. I think the McMurrays are very flexible. I mean, they're swingers. The McMurrays are swingers. I think Mrs. McMurray swings any which way the wind blows. I think Mr. McMurray only hangs out with ladies, but I think he likes his lady to be with ladies. I, they're, I think they're kind of classic suburban swingers. And so you said you don't really plan this out, but incoming seasons do you feel like uh any um need to up the gay quotient anymore i don't know that that's possible but... i don't know if it's possible i don't know if we have time <laughs> i don't know if we ha actually have the minutes available to us we're, we're, we're at peak we might be at peak gay but um <laughs> we really like what we what we do with the what we do with our queer characters the same thing we do with all our characters is uh, we, we've we dug in on them more and more over the years because we love them and it's funny. So basically it's like, if the if there's a funny idea, dig them in, you know, like we, uh, yeah, it, it's, there, there's no, I, when I say there's no plan, there's no like, there's no long-term maxi plan, but there is always the beginning of a season. If we think of a fun thing to do with Dax and Ron, we're like, oh, let's do that. You know, like that's what we want out of it. As the director of most of the episodes of Letter Kenny. All of them. Uh, do you, um, weren't there like six that weren't yours? No, Am sir. Every mistaken? single episode. Every single episode. Well, I'm going to write to IMDb because there are a few that were credited to others. Ah, those sons of... Yeah, let's get mad at them. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm wondering though, as the director, is there anything that you tell the cast to keep this tone so consistent? Or is it just, it's in the script and everybody knows it? Well, it's, you're right that it's in the script. The script is, I mean, you know, not to sound like an asshole, but there's, the, the, the dialogue is rhythmic it's very important to hold a rhythm with this dialogue. So the, the truth is, is if you surrender to the rhythm, you're gonna do it well. Um, it's much easier now than it used to be because now when people, new people come on the show, they've seen the show. So they understand what we're doing. Um, but even for the beginning, we had an amazing amount of buy-in from our cast and we, and you know, and it, and it is, it is largely on the page. Of course, as a director, you have to rein it in and tighten it up and do all kinds of things, but you're not, I, I've never started from scratch. It's very clear on the page how this is to be delivered. Well, congratulations on season nine. Thank you. It, it, this has been such a shit storm of the last year and this has brought me so much joy. So I just want to oh, thank you so much. I mean, that makes me very happy to hear that. I appreciate that. Yeah, and so uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. My pleasure, nice to meet you, Glenn. You too.